All right, we're live. What's up, everybody? This is Chris. This is my channel, We Love Comics, and I'm just going to start out by saying that this is not a comic book video, so if you're not into the situation that has happened the past couple of days, I understand, but I'm just letting you know right now that this is not a comic video. This is a thank you video. Um, I've read all of the comments and I was pleasantly surprised every single one of them has been nothing but kind and supportive and I wanted to express my deepest gratitude and thanks for making a horrible experience a little bit easier to deal with um, this is hitting me more than I thought and I'll explain a little bit for those who care as to why because to some people an animal is just an animal but to me with having no children they're like my children and I've always had a thing for cats I've had them all my life but knowing that these were stray cats that we took in and I'll, like I said I'll go into the story um, for those who care but um I wanted to personally say thank you. Forgive the appearance. I've just... Honestly, I'm still not over it yet. Um, with the fact of being stuck in my house with... Being unemployed for seven months and the strain of all the things that are going on. I also lost my Friday night job. I was just getting it back. And they already canceled it one week later. And uh, Buddy, my other cat, last yesterday morning... The door didn't close and he ran out and he was, we couldn't get him all day until about roughly almost midnight of last night. So things have been challenging to say the least. And I want to give a special two shout outs to, um, and forgive me if I say this wrong, but um, Valerino or Valerio and also Harvey. I'm not going to say their last names. Um, I appreciated that surprise emails that I got from you guys and let you know that the I wasn't like I said I wasn't asking for money or anything and they just kindly sent PayPal donations and they will be going towards Oregon's funeral costs um because we could we there was no way to save them we found out and just to give the full details of the situation we took them to a vet well we'll start from the beginning if you watch my video I did about two, two and a half days ago, my last comic book haul, at about the five minute and ten second mark, you'll see Oregon like he would do from time to time, is that morning when I made the video, he jumped on my shoulder, he's rubbing his head against me, he's pet, he loved being pet, he was trying, because he loves getting kissed and everything, it's just, he was just the ultimate kindest, sweetest cuddle bug, and, but everything was fine. And then all of a sudden, that afternoon, he shied away from his food, which, you know, that can happen with cats. Sometimes they don't like the food, they'll just walk away, so I didn't think anything of it. And then that night, you could tell he didn't eat again. I knew something wasn't right, but we figured because back in around February, he was diagnosed, and uh, Nam Loco just did a super chat, so thank you. I, I appreciate that. And like I said, I'm not asking for anything from anybody, so... I mean, I can't stop from somebody from being generous and kind, but I just want you to know this is not one of those videos where I'm trying to get gather sympathy for money. That's just not what this is about. So thank you for that. But um, back in February, Oregon was diagnosed with heart failure and had a permanent heart murmur, and basically they said he wasn't going to last a month or two. But I getting into holistic medicines, and we gave him plenty of things. And the funny, ironic part is his heart and his lungs and his breathing were in perfect condition when they checked him yesterday. So it wasn't his heart, and it wasn't his lungs. Because a lot of times when you have heart failure, you start building up fluid in your lungs, and they drowned in their own lung tissue being flooded. But his breathing and his heart rate was perfect. So ironically, when we had to put him down, I had to be the one that stopped his heart. And you can see this is still getting to me. 
So we took him to the vet early the next morning. As soon as we saw that he wasn't eating in the morning and he was very lethargic, he wouldn't get up. We knew something was wrong. His a normal cat's breath rate, and this I highly recommend, and this is the real, also the other purpose of this video is to help people with animals because he went from being perfectly fine to being so bad that we had no choice to put him down right away and there was no sign other than he was just tired and then 24 hours later he's dead so please check on your animals animals tend to hide pain so if all of a sudden, whether it's a dog, cat, anything, if they start acting differently, if their routine is different, check them out. So the good thing about, one of the good things about me not having a job for the past seven months and my wife working at home is we were able to check his breathing pattern. Now, a normal breath pattern for a cat. I can't do a dog because I don't have a dog, which means... If you time their breath from breathing in and out in a one minute span, a healthy cat is going to be between 15 and like 24. In that range is healthy. 25 to high 30s is to be cautious but still not in a danger zone. 40 and above, you should be taking them to the vet immediately because there's a problem. And just this month we've been checking his breath almost every day his breathing count was 18 to 22 so it was in the normal range but when i checked his breathing count that first night it was 29 and a half which is high but still not in a range of being scared that something's happening but there's a concern and then the next morning, his breathing count was 39, right at the threshold. And that's when we knew we had to take him to the vet. So we took him to the vet, and I'm thinking, you know, it's just another one of those things that because of the side effects of the medication and everything, because they said eventually the medication will break down his liver and his kidneys, and they'll have failure like what happened to my cat Luna, which, by the way, now two of the three cats that came from New York are gone. Shy is the only one left of the New York cats. Um, I just thought, you know, it's going to be something where, you know, they might have to give him some fluids and, you know, maybe drain out some fluid if there's in his lungs and it'll be perfectly fine. Like, they saved him when he was near death in February because his breath count was uh, like 46 when they took him in that night. I mean, they said he would have died the next day. So I'm thinking, you know, it's just a routine thing. No big deal. We'll fix it. End of problem. So when we go to the vet, and the kindest woman, I have to say this, I wish I knew her name, but she is the sweetest person. She almost started crying when she had to give the news. I mean, it's the most caring veterinarian woman I've ever dealt with in my life. I trusted anything she had to say, because every time she was just loving and caring, and she you could tell she, her passion and her heart was in her job because she loved Oregon too and was torn having to tell me the news now at that time she said that they did an x-ray and they found a golf ball sized lump in her in his intestines and they couldn't tell what it was they didn't know if maybe he ate something or worst came case scenario it was a tumor so that visit cost us about 500 to 600 dollars and she, I was saying, well, could an operation help? And they're like, well, I, we don't know. We can't really tell you because we don't know what it is. And I said, rough estimate, what do you think the cost would be for an operation like that? And she said, I don't know, but I would assume it's going to be around $1,500. And even right there on top of that, I'm like, well, $1,500. I've been out of work. That's putting a lot of stress on my wife because she's put, paying a lot of bills. I'm thinking... I don't know what to do. I'm thinking the worst case scenario is going to happen the next day. So I call my mother, explain the situation. She she actually, my mother says, because of situations I'm not going to get into, she owes me $10,000. And I forgot about it because to me, money doesn't matter. Like when my father died, and I'll get into why that's significant with Oregon, um, my family was fighting 
a little bit over the monetary value on my father's side for possessions and things, and I just don't care about that. I would rather have my father than a dime. So I didn't care about that stuff. But um, she said she would... It ended up she wasn't loaning me money. She said, I'll just advance you some of the money I owe you. So it was actually my own money that I was spending. So then I called my wife, told her the situation, and she said she'd be willing to take out of her savings if we can do something for Oregon. And I kept telling her, you know, that's a lot of money. Is that something you could do? And she wanted to do it. So I'm like, all right, we'll give them a chance. So as I'm driving Oregon back home, when I get into the house with him and the, the thing, he, he, he was just, you could tell he was totally sedated because they gave him pain medication because they said whatever it was when they pressed on his stomach, he was in a lot of pain. So they gave him a lot of painkillers and they said it'll last throughout the night. Here's more painkillers if you need it. And my wife says she called the emergency vet and they said it's now going to, from what they thought it could be, they said the bill was going to be 3000 And I'm like, we can't do that. As much as I love Oregon, I mean, how are we going to come up with five, $3,000 and it had to be before 5 p.m. that day? So it's not like if people said, oh, why don't you just sell your comics? I had, it was 4.20 when I got home and we had to come up with $3,000 before 5 p.m. Otherwise, the surgeon wouldn't be there for the rest of the day. So with that, even my wife said, you know what? I'll take it out of what's left of my savings. Let's give him the opportunity. I mean, I love my wife to death for this because I, as much as I love him, I don't think I could have done that. So we're like, all right, we'll see if we give him a shot. We'll do the ultrasound, which they said is going to cost about 600 and then we'll see if what they find, if a surgery will help, we'll give them the chance. If it's not going to help, I don't want them to go through that pain just so we can extend this life for a week. That's not fair. That's selfish. So I immediately bring them to the emergency vet, and they end up doing an ultrasound. And they said that he had a he had can a cancer, which was not detected at all when we went to the vet, which means the medication most likely that we were giving him to save his heart caused the cancer. Now, I can't confirm that, but he didn't have the cancer before, and all of a sudden he had this massive lump within a six-month period. So they said that the tumor burst and was filling his intestines with air and fluid. And if they didn't do an immediate surgery, there's nothing they could do for him. And I asked him, okay, thinking it's going to be the $3,000, I said, how much is that going to cost on top of what we've already spent? And they said $6,000. And that's when I was like, there's nothing more we can do. It went from 1500 which was expensive. And again, that's not including the $600 bill from the original vet. And then the six hundred, roughly five hundred and eighty-nine dollars for the, the um, sonogram. But it went from fifteen hundred to three thousand to now six thousand. And I said, I, I, we can't do it. It's not that I don't want to do it. It's we can't afford that six thousand dollars just to give them a little extra time. Can't do it. And I said, all right. We can't do the surgery. I'll take him home, and then we'll schedule to unfortunately put him down the next day, thinking we can take him home. He's on the pain medication. You know, we'll say our goodbyes. We can spend time together. He can see his brother, shy, and do this right. And unfortunately, it looks like the camera froze, so if you see a still image... Let me know if you're still hearing me, because, as usual, YouTube is just going to make things impossible. So, I hope you could still hear me. If somebody could let me know in the comment section. But I'm just going to continue anyway. Um, thinking that we could take him home. And the surgeon, the lady, says, I don't feel comfortable with you taking him home. Because the leak is so severe, he could literally die overnight and it would be extremely painful. So we have to 
put him down now. So my wife never got to see him again. All right, so they're saying they can hear me. They can still hear me. Thank you. I'm sorry. This, this is YouTube for you. Um, so my wife didn't get to say goodbye because she was working and she couldn't leave her post. I didn't have time to process it because now instead of planning it and giving us a night to spend with him, maybe give him some of his favorite food or just have him sleep in my arms... And of course, all this with the COVID, I couldn't even be there at first. I was outside the whole time. So I'm like, all right, I guess we have no choice. So the funeral costs, with we have, we're, we have, we're having him cremated, and we're gonna get the ashes back because it's like a hundred and fifty dollar charge just to get the ashes back. And I'm like, I don't care about saving money at that point. I'm not spending forty dollars for them to burn my cat and throw it in the garbage. So we're getting his ashes, we're getting a poor print and the hair sample. And that came out to like 200 and something dollars, which I don't care about. But I, I said to the doctor adamantly, if you are going to put him down, I have to be in the room. There is no debating this. Because I am not letting this scared animal who doesn't know where he is, who's drugged out of his mind, to just go without anybody there so without argument they accepted it and I'm very grateful for them for that they said I would have to wear a mask and they put me in a room and I waited there well I waited for an hour outside before they even let me in after they said they have to put him down because he's in pain so I had to wait outside in 95 degree weather with my mind racing all over the place upset that I'm about to have to kill my cat and this is the second one this year. Well, the other one was last year in the beginning of us moving here, five days after we moved here. They finally let me in. I go in the room, I have the mask on, and when I'm in the room by myself waiting, I take the mask off because I'm like, I cannot have my cat stare at something he's never seen before. He might not even know it's me. And I would have put up a major fight if they would have said something, but when they brought him in, the lady who did it didn't say a word, and I thank God for that. And they um, they brought him in in a blanket, and they put him in my arms. And they said, you can have all the time you need. And I felt bad my wife couldn't be there. That, that hurt, because she didn't get to say goodbye. And I took a little film like about 49 second film of him before they did everything because I wasn't going to film the process because I think that's just I didn't want to see that so I took a 49 minute video and I just sat with him for 5 minutes until he started getting a little restless because he was the only cat I ever knew that loved laying on his back you held him like a baby he loved it and he was just sitting there kind of staring at me his pupils were completely wide open you could tell he was drugged out and then after five minutes I could see he was getting kind of little anxious he wanted to move and he looked perfectly fine but unfortunately the cancer burst in his stomach and he was going to die because they said even if we did the operation because of the fact that the cancer burst all we would have done was give him a couple of days he would have been in pain and it would have been the most selfish thing to do. So it wasn't just the money. If I had the $6,000 and knew I could fix his life and he'd live another five, six, seven years, because it ends up, I said eight years old, he was only seven and a half. Because we found him on Father's Day, and I'll explain in the detail why he means so much to me, on Father's Day of 2013. So he wasn't eight years old. He was only seven. Cats live until average of 14 to 16. Some have lived to 30. He didn't even get to 8. So I'm sitting there. When I finally call the nurse in, I take one last picture of him and I give him a kiss goodbye. And I make his face... One of the things he used to love is he used to bury his face in my hand. It almost looked like you were suffocating him. But it, that wasn't the case. But he would love it when I put the palm of my hand over his eyes and just he would sit there sometimes for 
20 minutes and it would calm him down. So I did that at first and then I'm like, you know what, I need him to look me in the eyes. So I kind of tilted his head towards me and held it there so we were looking eye to eye. Now the big difference is with Luna, I did the same thing only they didn't allow it the cat to be in my arms but they put her on a table but they had her facing me and I stared at her eyes and I can tell the moment she was gone because her eyes all of a sudden just changed and went cold but with Oregon there was no change and even when they said he was gone he still looked alive and he still looked like he was looking at me and the thing that really killed me is afterwards when they said he was gone he gasped for air twice and it like shuddered me and they said that's just an after effect but how do they know for sure and then they said, you can have all the time you want. So for another two or three minutes, I just sat there with him. And he was just still in the position, staring at me until I let go of his head. And it just kind of slowly fell down. And I knew he was gone. Now, some will say, why is this soon-to-be 50-year-old man crying like a baby and acting like such a child when it comes to just a cat? This cat had, well, first of all, all of my cats are strays. I love helping stray animals. It's just a good feeling to know that an animal that nobody else cares about, because one of the things I learned about, especially in this area in Florida, they said there were a lot of people when they moved and they had cats, they just left them and abandoned them, which I think is the most garbage, cruel piece of you-know-what that can be done. So there's a little bit of a cat problem in this area. And we've been spending our money getting as many of them around here spayed and fixed so they don't continue. But, you know, there are some kittens and I've been taking... We took some in and we take care of the rest. We give them nothing but pretty much dry food. We put out water every day. I feed them three times a day. I make sure I pet them and hold them so they're used to it. And if somebody wants to take them... I would gladly help them, but I'm helping them because I love doing that. So, Shy is a stray, Oregon is a stray, Luna was a stray. Every one of my animals have been strays because I love helping what others would just abandon and walk past who don't give a rat's behind about. Now, some of you may or may not know, because I don't discuss these things very often, but my father died in a fire in 2012. My parents got divorced when I was 10. About three or four years later, he moved away with his new wife and his new family to Virginia. And for about 20 years, I saw him maybe three times, maybe four. And then all of a sudden, he got a divorce and wanted to move back to New York, where I lived, to get reconnected with me for the first time in decades. I got to see him once. And then I got a phone call from my uncle, who I've never gotten a phone call from in my life, at 6 o'clock in the morning to say my father died in a fire. Now, he didn't burn. he It was a smoke inhalation that got him. Okay, so what's the significance with this? Well, folk, fast forward one year after my father's death on Father's Day. Now, if you've ever gone to my web store where I sell comics and stuff, one of the first things you'll see on the web store is a bunch of pyramids. They're called Oregon Pyramids. Well, on Father's Day, to try and alleviate my pain, it was a nice sunny day. Instead of feeling really sad that it, it's the first Father's Day I had without a father, even though I hadn't seen him in basically decades, it's still the fact of knowing that he's gone... I decided to go out in my backyard and start making some of my Oregon pyramids. And by the way, Shy, we got in 2010, we found him in my basement on Mother's Day. So it seems like holidays are very dangerous for me when it comes to animals. So I'm out in the backyard on Father's Day, on the year anniversary of my father's death. Well, he died in April. 
and I hear this, what I think is a bird chirping. Now, about two days before Father's Day, I got the car that my father owned. It was just a, a like a ninety a two thousand one Kia, something like that. It's, a, it's just a it's a, it wasn't a great car, but my sister lived in Arizona, and my half sister I don't even know where she lives some some other state, I think Virginia. So they couldn't get the car, so I just took it. I, not that I cared. Like I said, the possessions don't mean anything to me. But it was stuck at the house, and they were going to just junk it. So I took that car home. And it ended up, this kitten was underneath my father's car that we just brought two days before on Father's Day, the first year of my father's death. And when I showed my mother a picture of this kitten... She's like, oh my God, I want to show you something. And they showed a picture of my father when he was like 20 years old. His first cat was the split image of this kitten in every single way. So here I am thinking that's one heck of a sign from either my father, God, or whatever. You want to call it a coincidence, that's fine. But a year after my father dies on Father's Day, we find a kitten that was underneath my father's car that was only there for two days, wouldn't leave that car, wouldn't run anywhere else. Like it, when it ran and hid when I tried to get it at first, it ended up ultimately going inside the engine. Now the ironic part was, I thought a smart thing would do would be to try and scare him out because I couldn't reach him by turning on the engine. Well because I didn't drive the car because I didn't need it and I just took it because it, it just sat in my driveway the battery had died so when I tried to turn on the car it didn't turn so I lift up the hood and I reach in and dive in and the area is all filled with mud and grease and car engine stuff and he had uh, gunk in his eyes not from the car but you know some cats that get that liquidy kind of stuff around their eyes and it was all swollen and that wasn't from the car that's probably why his mother abandoned him and it was the exact image of my father's first cat. Either one heck of a coincidence or there's some divine intervention. So this cat, Oregon, and I named him Oregon because I was finding, making those Oregon pyramids at the time I found him. And the fact that when I brought him into the house, I had a bunch of those pyramids all around. He would go to him and sleep on them. So that's when I came up with the name Oregon. So he was my last connection to my father. I've had animals, like I said, I've had, had cats all my life. My mother loved cats. Ever since I was a child, we had a cat. My mother had sometimes had five, six, seven cats because she was the same way. So I'm used to it. But this cat, I would literally, since a kitten, I would have it straddle my forearm and just put my forearm straight and it would be, he would be comfortable. He would just rest his head in the palm of my hand and just sit there, sometimes for hours, with his legs on either side of my forearm. I could hold him upside down. He would love it, and he'd just stare at me. I had a connection with this cat I've never had with probably even my best friends. He'd wake me up almost every morning by rubbing his face against mine. He loved getting kisses, which I know that sounds weird, but, you know... I, I'm, if you know anything about my channel, I'm going to be straightforward. I don't care what people say and judge. Because if they're going to judge me on being kind and sweet to an animal, well, if that's the worst you can find about me, I'm okay with that. But another thing that was exclusive with him is every time I would take a shower, and I'd, I'd have to have two towels on because he would want to jump on my shoulder and rub up against me. And that, there were times it was so frequent... That when, back in New York, when I had to go DJ, because I'd, you know, have to get ready to go to work, I'd have to take the shower about an af extra half hour early to give him time to jump on my shoulder, be pet, and just sit there. So I would put that as my routine. So I have a connection with this animal more than just a household pet. So to have a cat one day in the morning and again you could see it in the last comic haul video I did it's a, like I said it's about a five minute ten minute uh, five minute ten second mark you'll see he jumps on my shoulder perfectly fine nothing wrong and a day later he's in my arms and we're putting him to sleep where he's gone before he ever hit the age of eight years old 
and it didn't matter the money and thank God for my wife and my mother because like I said even though that money my mother was giving me was technically mine I totally forgot about it so I didn't even think about it if I knew it would this operation would have saved him it would have been a different story but 6,000 was way too much 3,000 we would have done it but they basically said because the the cancer burst they, we couldn't even give him 24 hours to come home and we had to put him down right there so I didn't even have time to prepare it was just and especially like I said waiting an hour outside once they told me you had to put him down I had to wait an hour before they even let me in and then when I was in there they made me wait another 5 to 10 minutes before they brought him in and so on and so forth so by 6.53pm he was gone because they brought him in at 6.44 and I said I'll stay with him until 6.50 and then I called the nurse in and then the rest is history I'm still feeling his pain uh, the pain of his loss it, I feel the last connection of my father is gone he was literally my best friend was there whether I had put on pounds whether I lost weight whether I didn't shower for the day whether I was in a good mood whether I was in a bad mood whether I was alone regardless he was always there and that's one of the reasons why I actually love animals more than I do people sometimes because animals love you for you not your religion or your politics or your color of your skin they love you because of who you are and to me that is what I wish humanity was like where you can just be loved because you are a fellow human being but we don't have that in this world so that was a connection I had with him and I mean I love shy don't get me wrong I loved Luna don't get me wrong I love the outside cats and everything but this cat of all the cats I've had my entire life I've never had this kind of connection where I could literally call his name and he would come running and to lose him you know like they say everybody says you know animals die and that's true I'm not sitting here and say I would have not been sad if it would have been 16 years later but if he would have died of natural causes of old age I would have no problem with it because it's part of life we all go that's why this whole situation in the world right now is absolutely crazy because I hate to inform people but regardless of how you live your life one day your life will come to an end and why is everybody putting their life on hold for fear of the inevitable is beyond me but I would have been okay with the fact if he would have had his time and then he, his time was done but to have it basically ripped from him it hurts me inside and some can say that's oversensitive and that's fine I think of it as empathy sympathy and caring and those are qualities that a lot of people are lacking these days and if that makes me different if that makes me strange then I am proud to be different and proud to be strange because if being sympathetic and empathetic towards creatures is considered a flaw or something to mock then this world is definitely going in the wrong direction so I wanted to give this to those very few people that will care not many people are watching this video not many people are going to watch this video very few are going to watch from beginning to end and that's okay because this video is for me and it's to thank those that were kind enough to send messages and I know it's not easy when anybody or anything that somebody cares about is gone on what to say but those who took the time to share their condolences and say their kind words I want you to know that it meant a lot to me and it helped make it a little bit easier now out of respect for Oregon and how it keeps bringing it up I am go not going to comment respond to each to any of the comments on those two videos I just want to try and 
leave that as people's way of saying their condolences and respecting it. But I want you to know if you are one of the people that has or is going to leave a nice comment, I want you to know I read every one of them. And again, to uh, Valerio and Harvey, who gave surprise um, PayPal donations, which, like I said, you didn't have to, I want you to know those are not going towards comic books. They are going to help pay for the funeral costs of my cat. And I want to thank people that follow my channel, because I know my channel is probably different than 90% of the YouTube community out there. I understand that. But that's why I want people to know that when they come here, I'm not guaranteeing everything. I'm not going to make the best videos. I'm not going to cut out every little thing. I'm not going to pretend to be some superstar movie star who has no feelings and is just trying to get you to hit the like button and subscribe button and pretend to be something I'm not. I am going to give you me straightforward. You could like it, you can hate it, and that's perfectly fine. But the one thing that I am proud of that nobody can say is Chris was fake. And those that keep coming back and have been coming back regularly for years are showing me that there are still people in this world that actually appreciate those who just want to be themselves. I cannot watch YouTube anymore for the most part because people are pretenders. They all pretend to be perfect and, and have their makeup on or they have their fancy clothes or their fancy green screens and they have to put on a smile and they have to pretend everything's right and everything's perfect and they have to edit the video and if they made a mistake, they have to cut it out so you cannot see that and they have to make sure if they made some kind of mistake, they have someone else to blame. Here, I will take as much responsibility for what I do wrong as much as the praise of things that I will do right. I will always stay humble and I will always care to the point where some will say it's overboard or fake or, you know, some people can make whatever assumptions they want. But know that when you watch my channel, what I say, whether you agree with or not, is up to you, but I want you to know it's from the heart. And I genuinely care, when I talk about comic books especially, I generally care that everybody wins when I make a recommendation. I don't make a video and then post 500 of that book on eBay because I wanted to make a video to promote it so I could make money. Now, of course, I make like making money as much as anybody, but there's certain ways I will not go about doing it. So, when you come here, you're going to get a channel that is going to be probably different from anybody else. There will never be a green screen. I will never edit my videos to make myself look perfect. I will always stand up for what I believe in, even if it goes against what everybody else says and doesn't like me for it. I wish our politicians and our news media and our teachers and our business people would be that respectful to their family and friends and co-workers and Americans and humans. So, thank you very much to the very few of you who have been loyal to my channel. Now, I'm going to start making videos again soon. And I know there will be losses along the way. And I know I'll get the typical thumbs down, and I know I'll get the negativity and the people making accusations for whatever reason they feel like they need to do it, so be it. That's their choice of the way they want to live their life. But I know there will be people like Florence and Harvey and many others that will continuously come here and even disagree with me at times, but do it in a way that is constructive instead of destructive. And to you guys and girls that are the very few that come here for more than just a spec video, I thank you for your support. I thank you for your loyalty. And I thank you for being excited when Oregon made his appearances. 
because it meant a lot for me too that when I made a video he would come running and meowing and want to be a part of it none of it was ever staged I never used the cats and put them on a pedestal and set it up to do those cute little cat videos never once did I do that ever when a cat came into frame it's because they wanted to be there so never once did I stage it thinking oh people love cats so let me set up my cat to make it look like a cute video as you saw with that video I was already started and then all of a sudden he jumped on my lap and then I put him on my shoulder so none of it was ever staged and it's just like my channel it's just what it is and I appreciate those who had Oregon be just as much a part of this channel as myself and the comic books as well I will forever miss the things that I will no longer have but I will appreciate because another thing I forgot we when we took Oregon to the vet when he was the baby like I said when we found him he had like gunk in his eyes so we took him to the vet they said he had feline AIDS so from day one his life was a struggle he was abandoned at birth he had an eye infection which is normal sometimes for cats when they're born feline AIDS heart failure and then ultimately died of a bursted cancerous tumor and never once was he nasty or hissing or biting or uh, evasive he was the most loving kindest creature in the world so maybe that's why his heart gave out at one point is because he had so much of it to give and that's the irony of his death like I said earlier even though he they said he wouldn't last a month he lasted seven and it wasn't the heart that killed him and ironically with having to put him out of his misery because he wouldn't have survived the night and he would have been in major pain once the the painkillers were wore off I had to have his heart stop so I had to end it And I will forever have not one now, but two animals burned into my memory of me staring them in the eyes. And I thought that was the most important thing. Because I've always been before that. I was always afraid of death. The old me would have not wanted to be in the room. When my father died and they needed somebody to identify the body, I could not do it. I could not see my father laying on a slab. So I had to have my uncle go and verify that it was him but I owed it to them and I made sure I looked them in the eyes as painful as it was as much as I didn't want to do it I wanted their last thing on earth that they saw was the person who loved them more than anyone or anything and I hope I'm as lucky when it's my turn to go. So, I thank you for listening and putting up with the way I'm acting. I, I have no apologizing for feeling and caring. And people can judge it any way they want. But if the world cared as much about situations that mattered as opposed to the rest of the world and how it's going now we would be going in a much better unified direction so I have no apologies for the way I'm feeling right now because this is me not holding back and I wish the camera was still working but that's YouTube for you so I'll apologize for the, the camera freezing and YouTube being a jerk as usual but I will not apologize for speaking from the heart 
and showing you guys that I appreciate you because here I am with the third non-comic book video and there are, I can't tell how many people are watching because if I hit this OK button with the error thing that came up it will just shut off so it's not showing me who's in the live chat but even if there's one I thank you all for caring your prayers your support and even before we found out that we had to put him down those that were rooting for him I want you to know we gave him the best possible life and it just angered me that it took the lack of funds in this world to keep something you love but again like they said that surgery would have probably caused him a lot of pain it may have given him a month more and he would have had to continue the treatments and it would have been too evasive and that would have been selfish for me as much as I love him sometimes you have to let something you love go to keep it from feeling the pain and as much as it hurt me to let him go at least I know that he did not die in pain and he was with the one person that loved him more than anything. <sighs> is it? You can tell how good something is in your life by the amount of pain you feel from the loss. So I hope you can hear it in my voice how much he meant to me in those seven years and I would have loved it to have been more but like they say it is better to have loved than lost than never to love at all I can't imagine my life not having him be a part of it anymore but I also am very glad I got to share the small amount of time he was willing to come to this earth to help make me happy and I want this to be a lesson to anyone who has an animal don't take what you love for granted watch the video the comic book video I did just three days ago at the five minute and eleven second point and you'll see he looked perfectly fine that's why it came to such a shock when I found out not only did we have to put him down but we had to put him down right away he went from perfectly fine to all of a sudden the next day he's done he's gone so please check on your animals and check on your family check on yourself appreciate what you have in this world because it could literally be gone in an instant and the things you take for granted one day may be the most appreciative thing because I'll tell you something there was one thing that always used to annoy me about Argon well two things one is when we were making their food their food getting it ready he would constantly like 10 20 times in a row jump up and try and eat the food and we would get annoyed about that and we'd constantly put him down and not yell at him we wouldn't hit him or anything but we'd put him down and say no you can't be up then we'd get aggravated about it it'd be annoying and then anytime I made myself food he would always follow me because I always ate in the bedroom especially these days you know because being in a house for seven months will get you a little depressed I don't care how happy a person you are when you cannot work because you're not allowed to and everything that you've built up is gone it's going to challenge you I'm not gonna lie it's been challenging it's not going to break me but it was a challenge but he would always follow me in like if I'd make an egg sandwich I'd always have to break off a little piece of cheese and if I ate spaghetti or something like that I would constantly have to keep pushing him away because he'd want some and want some and I wouldn't let him have it and I would get annoyed sometimes but you know what now I wish that when I open a can of cat food he would be there to jump up and annoy me because now that will never happen again and some of the things in your life from people that you love may do things that absolutely annoy the living daylights out of you but I promise you when they're gone those are gonna be the things that you remember the most and you're gonna wish they were there to do those things
and will hurt knowing it will never happen again. So be grateful for what you have, whether you have it all or you have just enough to get by. Because let me tell you something, it is so much better to have your nose an inch above the water struggling than to be an inch below the water drowning. And if I'm going to learn anything from this, that when you feel pain of a loss, it's because something meant to you so much that it pains you to have them leave. And that means you had something special. And honestly, I can give a damn about any of my comic books when it comes to loves of my life. I would trade every comic book I own to have my father back. To have my cats back. And I love my comics. But I don't love them that much. And they definitely do not love me back. So if I can teach anyone that cared enough to watch until this end. If you have children. Or pets. Or family. And you get arguments with them. Or you're fighting. Or there's something about them you don't like. Cherish them. I don't want anyone to feel what I'm feeling right now. But I wouldn't change it for the world. Because if I could go back seven years ago. And have a genie say. Well you're going to have this animal. And it's going to die early. And it's going to devastate you. And it's going to set you back. And you're going to curse God. And you're going to curse yourself. And you're going to be angry at the world. But it's going to give you the most love you've ever had in your life. But I can make that not happen. Like you never met him in your life. Would I choose to do it? Hell no. I would go through that pain again and again, knowing of what happens. Because like I said, two of our three cats from New York are gone. Luna and now Orgon. And Shy's the only one left. And he's called Shy for a reason. He's only loving when he wants to be. You can't hold him. He hates being held. You can't hold him. He'll, make vid he'll come to the video every now and then, but he'll jump on the computer screen and shut it off. He'll only sit near me when I'm laying down in bed. And he'll lay down on me before I go to sleep. And then he'll walk away. But I'll love him regardless. Love the people that are in your life regardless of how imperfect they are. And love their imperfection because that's what makes them them. That's what makes them special. And even like when I always say about the comic book community. If everybody was the same, what would be the incentive of watching anyone more than one person? appreciate people's ability to think different and be different and have different points of view. I mean, heck, if you can't learn anything about it, look at the world today and what division and hatred is doing to this world. So if somebody from now on, one of my haters or whatever, wants to criticize me because I cried over a cat, okay. At least I didn't murder anybody. At least I'm not lying to millions of people to gain their favor for a corporation or a politician who's just pandering to you to get your vote and to people who preach tolerance by burning down buildings and robbing stores and wishing death on other people I would rather be the crying sensitive little crybaby because it was real. It was caring. It was unselfish. It's tears of missing something that I love. And if somebody hates me or wants to see that as a weakness, that's perfectly fine because I promise you all this. My upbeat videos about how you create your reality and everything, you're going to be tested. And I've been tested. But I'll tell you something. I've been down, but I will never be out. And I will come back from all of this stronger than ever. But I will still be able to maintain my compassion, my empathy, my caring, my love. And yet still be stronger for it, not be weaker for it. 
So be real. Love the people. Cherish what you have. Because that's what I'm going to use Orgon's death for. His legacy. That he loved me regardless of who anybody else thought. Animals are put on this earth to teach you what true love is supposed to be. That's what unconditional love is. Your animal, if you have one, loves you whether you shower or not. Whether you have a million dollars or you're homeless. Whether, and here comes Shy, I was about to say Oregon. Whether you are gay or straight, whether you're black or white, whether you're a Democrat whether you're socialist, whether you're whatever. Animals love you regardless. They want your ability to help protect them, give them a shower, water, and give them love, and that's all they require. And if human beings could learn from them what they're trying to teach us, then just imagine what a wonderful world this would be. So that's what I'm going to say is the reason happens for a reason tried to remind me of things I say all the time but I didn't want to hear it and I understand that when you're angry when you're in pain you don't want to hear the Sun will come out tomorrow and the grass is greener on the other side you don't want to hear that BS but it's there for a reason and now that I have time to think about it a little bit I am going to take his death as a legacy of showing what real love is supposed to be and the computers about to die so thank you for watching I don't know if you can hear this anymore I love you all.